Good morning, everybody. Um, I'll give a welcome to our uh, webinar. We'll take a minute here while people stream in. Um, in the meantime, while, uh, while people are joining us, feel free to go ahead and pop a uh, note in the chat and introduce yourself. Tell us where, we're, where you're from. And we'll get going in just a minute here. We still have a couple people streaming in, so I'll give it another minute here. Okay, uh, good morning and welcome. Uh, this is an informational webinar on Emeritus's Postgraduate Diploma in Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence. Uh, my name is Jacob Kohler. Um, I am a course lead uh, for Emeritus, usually with, the, with this course. And um, I look forward to just giving you a kind of a, a high level overview of the experience and happy to answer any questions um, as we go along. So first things, um, if you haven't used Zoom before, a uh, quick overview, just um, make sure that you have, if, if um, you're having any audio issues, just make sure to check that your audio settings are, are appropriate, okay? I, sh I hope that I'm coming through nice and clear to everybody. If you do have any questions um, through the webinar, please use the Q&A box to ask those questions. I will periodically, uh, pause the presentation and just make sure if there are any questions that arise that I, have, I uh, answer them. But also at the end of the webinar, you'll have plenty of times to ask me any questions that you may have as well. Um, but again, please use the Q&A for that. And um, yeah, like I said in the chat, you can uh, please do introduce yourself, tell us where, we, where you're from, say hi to everybody. Okay, and then what we'll be getting into today during the webinar is just an uh, introduction to the people involved in the course, a little about Emeritus, a uh, high level overview of the course content and material, the kinds of things that you'll be expected to do um, as a learner in the course. And uh, finally, some other big picture Emeritus opportunities after the course and, um, and of course our question and answer. All right, so uh, again, an introduction to the people involved in the course. This is me, I'm Jacob. Um, I've been working with Emeritus for a couple of years now and mainly on uh, this diploma program. Um, I also, uh, you know, this is in collaboration with Columbia University. That's where I finished uh, school. And um, yeah, I, I think this is a great great diploma. And uh, in terms of the Columbia faculty, this is Dr. John Paisley and Dr. Ansaf Saleb. Um, Dr. Paisley is in charge of the content for the machine learning portion of the diploma. And Dr. Saleb is um, in charge of the artificial intelligence part of the course. But they are both, uh, they're both faculty members at, uh, at Columbia. And yeah, then myself and Carlton, uh, we will be your course leads. Uh, both of us have worked on this course through a few iterations. Um, Carlton is a data scientist in out of uh, Chicago. 
Uh, and again, I am a uh, mathematics educator out of uh, New York. All right, so a little bit about Emeritus. Um, again, Emeritus partners with many major universities to offer uh, courses internationally. We have, we will have people from all over the world in this course. Um, and we've served over 50,000 students around the world already to this point. But do expect a very kind of global group of peers in the, uh, in the course that, that tends to be the case for, for this diploma that we have students represented uh, all over the world. So during the course, again, this is uh, roughly nine, nine months here, um, we have the recorded content. We also have some guest lectures. There is a lot of opportunity to interact with your peers and talk to one another. Um, we do have, we have consistent assignment and more importantly, we're really here to try and support you um, in your learning journey. We, we want you to succeed. We want you to do well. And um, I think that that's echoed by high course completion rates. Overall, Emeritus course completion rates are around 85%. I know that in, the, in this diploma program, we're more around 95%. Also, uh, with Emeritus, after you finish the diploma program, you have access to the what's what's called the Emeritus Network. And again, Emeritus partners with a number of universities to offer different courses. Um, and in through the Emeritus Network, you'll be able to interact with individuals who have uh, taken both the continue to interact with individuals from this diploma program, but also from some of the other courses if you're interested. And that out of that, you can you know, have conversations about next steps, what you would like to do, and just uh, an opportunity to interact with a, a very nice group of individuals, again, from very different backgrounds and uh, geographies. Okay, so the diploma itself. Um, oh, this is, again, the artificial intelligence uh, revolution is, is taking over. Um, this course offers a, a firsthand experience with many of the important algorithms that we hear so much about in the news, um, both in artificial intelligence and in machine learning. So you'll get experience uh, at conceptually. This is not a, um, a course that lacks rigor. Uh, it's a deep conceptual exploration of our machine learning algorithms and artificial intelligence algorithms but you'll also get consistent hands-on experience using Python to, uh, to implement all of these algorithms. So the course is structured first with the machine learning portion of it. Uh, that's a 12 week course. And in that we discuss a lot of the classic machine learning algorithms. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about these, uh, about regression, classification, clustering, and uh, some recommendation system um, type problems are, are what dominate that course, okay? And then after the applied machine learning course, we have the applied artificial intelligence course. And in the artificial intelligence course, we go through the mainstays of artificial intelligence. It is not only about neural networks. We also discuss classic search problems and we spend a, a good amount of time discussing artificial neural networks as well. After those two courses, we have our capstone project. And in the capstone project, we are given a real world data set from industry. We have an industry partner who, who provides us with a real world data set and a problem. Um, in the past, we have worked with uh, AAA, which is a large um, travel and auto support program here in the United States. Um, we have also worked with uh, recently with Nuveen a uh, financial service company who provided us a data set about manager performance. Um, so in the capstone, again, like with, with that real world data set, we have uh, about six weeks to produce a report using all of the things that we learned in the first two parts of the class, all of your machine learning and artificial intelligence and exploratory data analysis 
uh, skills that you pick up in Python will be applied here. All right, so let me take a minute and pause here and make sure that we don't have any questions lingering. Yeah, okay, so a uh, little bit more detail about, um, about the course. So, you know, again, each week we will release a module. We use the Canvas learning platform and we will release a module every week. So this, this rolls out kind of one week at a time. Um, each of those weeks expect to spend about six to eight hours uh, on the course. And that would be a mixture of watching video content um, and working on the assignment and maybe attending office hours as well. We do have, well, I'll talk more about office hours, but we have office hours every week with the course leads. Um, yeah, and then we also have, in addition to this, we have a few webinars through the course. We'll have four webinars in the machine learning part of the course. We'll have four webinars in the um, applied artificial intelligence part of the course. Certain assignments, you know, our, our weekly assignments, again, almost every week through the course, you'll have uh, an assignment. Some weeks we have assignments that uh, span two weeks, but um, some examples are things like making a recommendation engine, uh, predicting house prices, um, recognizing human activity and motion using geospatial information, uh, detecting credit card fraud and market segmentation and segmenting, uh, segmenting customers. So just a couple of examples of, uh, problems that you'll face in the assignments. All right, and on to the emeritus learning experience. So again, what we we use Canvas. That's our learning platform. In addition to Canvas, every week, the course leads myself and Carlton will conduct live office hour sessions. During those office hour sessions, we'll have the you'll have the opportunity to ask any questions you have about the assignment. We can go over uh, potential approaches to problems, and um, usually we also like to extend the lecture content a bit and go into some deeper dive into the implementation in Python um, and a little more about uh, the week's content and some ancillary kind of ideas. In addition to those uh, live sessions, like I mentioned, we have the webinars, but we also have assignments every week and you have the opportunity to talk to your peers throughout uh, utilizing the our discussion boards, okay? So you'll always be able to talk to one another you can talk to your course leads and contact them directly. You have, you have email access to us um, throughout the course and you can always reach us and reach out to us and you'll hear back from us uh, for sure. Yeah, so we're here to guide you. And I think that that's one of the biggest differences with Emeritus is that both Carlin and myself will be here with you through this time and we're here to support you. Um, we are always happy to talk about assignments and to talk about more kind of practical things as well during office hours and answer any kind of questions that you have about the week's content. All right, so again, every week, you know, expect to spend about six to eight hours. This is over the course of that nine months. And that's a mixture of consuming uh, video content, working on independent assignments, attending office hours, talking with your peers on the discussion boards, and um, attending any of the uh, web additional webinars that we offer through the course. Now, all of these live sessions are also recorded and posted to the learning platform if you can't attend. For example, if, if my office hours are, uh, you know, if you're on the other side of the world and you're sleeping when I give my office hours, they will be recorded and posted. We try to um, stagger them so that they are accessible for everybody. At least one of the office hour sessions during the week are accessible to everybody. But um, uh, again, all of the content is always recorded and, and posted online. 
So the process of uh, getting into the course, you have to fill out the application and submit it. You'll pay the application fee. Once you pay the application fee, you will receive an email from Emeritus, information about the course, including information about a short uh, pre-admission kind of screening test. Now, uh, once you, you'll have a couple of, I'll talk a little bit more about the pre-admission test, but you'll have a couple of opportunities to pass it. It's just a short kind of high level of review of uh, statistics and, and a, little bit of, um, a little bit of calculus and stuff. Um, but you'll have a couple of opportunities to pass that. Once you pass that, you get into the course. And again, this is really just to make sure that this is the right kind of place for you. Um, you know, it's, it's not a, a, an incredibly difficult uh, uh, assessment, but it's just to make sure that you you understand what we're uh, getting into here. All right, so, right, the pre-admission test, again, after you, after you register, you'll get a, a sample of this assessment. So it will give you the, the questions or the similar questions to what you will have to answer here. Um, there are, I think, I believe that there are 10 of them. Um, and yeah, it's just a high level review of some probability and stats and a little bit of calculus and linear algebra. But this is more about just kind of uh, setting the scene for what is expected uh, through the nine months. And again, you'll have two attempts to take this and you'll have the, the kind of the, an idea of what these questions are in advance. If after a couple of times taking it, you, you know, you haven't achieved the seven out of 10, then we'll just talk to you about what other options might be right. Um, you know, again, we're trying to, to guide you to the right course. We're not trying to make this uh, uh, a barrier to participating. Yeah, and we have, uh, so as far as the course fee goes, uh, it's 3,300 US dollars. Um, there are a few different ways that you can pay. The application deadline for the this coming run is the uh, 1st of December, and the application fee is uh, $50. Okay, so just keep in mind that this starts up the 3rd of December, but the deadline for uh, applying is the 1st of December. And upon completion, you do get a certificate. Um, you can share the certificate and badge on LinkedIn. Um, but this is after, uh, after our capstone uh, is submitted and everything goes well, you get your sample certificate. All right, so now I have the opportunity to answer any questions that you may have about the course. Um, so let me exit out of here and okay. So uh, Wikis, do I need to be familiar with Python? Uh, good question. Uh, not necessarily. I do recommend that you have a little bit of background coding experience, but in addition to um, in addition to these two courses, there is some uh, extra extra learning material that we offer to review kind of the introductory Python uh, concepts. Um, I'd recommend that you have a little bit of coding experience. And if you haven't done anything, then I would say just try to, you know, get your hands on some things here in advance of in, in getting into the course. Um, but no, it's not necessarily the case that you have to have um, Python experience. Okay. Sure. Uh, classes on weekend or weekday? Yeah, usually they, well, so the office hours will, will be during the week. Um, the office hours with myself and Carlton will be during the week. The other course material is uh, pre-recorded because um, it's pre-recorded because, or well, it, so that you can watch it whenever. <laughs> so the, the lectures and things like that, and, and also the office hours recordings and webinar recordings are accessible and you can watch those. The, the live content though of the office hours will typically be during the week as well as the uh, webinars. Any other? 
other uh, any other questions I can uh, answer for people? How deep is the course in front of the actual applications on AI on the industry? Um, okay, that's a good good question. Um, I would say that we will discuss a number of relevant problems to industry. Uh, there's a few ways to understand this. Um, one of them is, you know, that there's a lot of different types of work in that involve machine learning and artificial intelligence. And it really depends on kind of the context of the work as to which of these uh, maybe algorithms and um, ideas would be relevant, you know, like in certain roles, maybe you're just because of the nature of the data, you're using different ones. So, but the, if you look at some jobs and get a sense for the kinds of things that you're trying to do, you'll see that the algorithms that we discuss are just kind of the bread and butter of expectations in data science. Like every data scientist uh, will know and understand linear regression, logistic regression, decision tree models, neural networks, like these are the bread and butter. And then you'll, you'll use those differently depending on which shop you're in, but, um, but they are certainly at use in industry. And we'll also familiarize you with the, you know, first off, this is Python. Python is, you know, the dominant language in data science. And uh, the primary libraries of use there are things like scikit-learn and Keras and maybe PyTorch for, uh, for artificial neural networks. And, and we discuss all of those in, in the course as well. So conceptually, the algorithms that we'll be discussing are very relevant for industry, but also the tools that you're using in this course are the dominant tools in the, uh, in the industry right now as well. So I would say that it's pretty deep firsthand experience with real world applications and tools in use in the field. And Demetrius asks, is this course practical or more theoretical? I would, I want to say that it's both. Um, and the reason that I say that it's both is because the lectures themselves from uh, Dr. Paisley and, and Dr. Saleb are, are rigorous. Um, and you know, we, there's no dodging of mathematics here. Um, so, so I would say that there is definitely deep conceptual coverage of the content. In the assignments and in office hours and uh, kind of the other side of the course, we try to be very practical about the implementation because the, the kind of lecture content is rigorous and conceptual. And um, I mean, it talks about applications as well, but then in the um, in our uh, office hours and such, we want to introduce you to kind of the coding and practical side of things as well. So I think there's a very good balance of both conceptual and practical, and you're able to engage with whichever of those you want as deep as you would like. Everybody has to do the assignments, which are going to be code, and so that's a very kind of practical implementation. Um, but I think that it, it does a nice job balancing the practical and the theoretical. All right. Uh, Rebecca says the peer learning discussions, are they, are they graded mandatory for completing the course or is this available to enhance the experience? Yeah, they are just there to enhance the experience of the course. You, you have the opportunity to talk to your peers if you would like, um, but it is not required. All right. And so Lazaro, so you would say we are going to be able to write our own algorithms after finishing the course. Um, I mean, if you, if you do what you're supposed to do through the course and, and work hard, absolutely. And, you know, really the, that's the majority of the assignments are walking through coding many of the algorithms from kind of scratch and then using a library to implement them. So we walk through, here's how, here's what's going on under the hood. And then we see how we would implement it using an existing library. Uh, all right, Pierre asks, which country from your point of view is the best place to use this PG diploma? Uh, geez, I don't know. 
I mean, I think that uh, it's a very international thing because a lot of the work, especially right now in this in this industry, is remote work. So, you know, that we have data scientists and engineers all over the world uh, working for companies located in very different places. Uh, all right. So Vito asks. Uh, Question, could you tell me what are the topics of the webinars? Who's delivering them online? And can I decide not to take the whole course after the unit test? Um, okay, so first is the topics of the webinars. Um, I, don't, I don't recall exactly what our webinar topics are, but you guys do have the opportunity to inform those a little bit. Um, myself and Carlton, your course leads give the online webinars. So um, in the past, you know, we've, we've done things with just kind of, well, I think that it was regression, like, Linear regression was was one in the last run. Uh, cl advanced classification algorithms, clustering, um, gave a webinar on clustering with text, and writing custom uh, custom clustering classes. Um, we'll definitely have a couple on artificial neural nets and implementation with Keras, um, but. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember the exact webinar uh, titles that we'll have for, for this course, but during, e during each of the, so in machine learning, we have four webinars and in artificial intelligence, we have four webinars. And those are in, again, in, in addition to the weekly uh, office hours. And um, do we still do the assignments in Vocarium? Yes, yes you do. Yeah, that's what we, we have uh, auto graded assignments here. Um, the other question was, if you decide to not take the whole course after the unit test, um, I think that if you, uh, I think that if you decide to apply and enroll in the course, um, I don't know that you can, I don't know that you can after that uh, unenroll. Um, but I don't know, you, you just talk to admissions, um, it, you know, there we're, we're pretty flexible here. So, um, but just, just make sure that you're clear on what I, I, I don't, uh, I don't do admission. So, um, just make sure that you talk to admissions about, uh, any of your concerns with, uh, with enrolling in, in the admissions test. Okay. Um, are there prerequisites for the course? Well, we expect you to have had experience with uh, some of the kind of classic undergraduate mathematics, you know, a little bit of calculus, statistics, and linear algebra. Uh, don't let that scare you. It doesn't mean we expect you to remember everything and, you know, uh, but you, you should have just some, have had some experience with those ideas in the past. Uh, a little bit of experience coding would be good, but, um, but really the, the main prerequisites are, are gonna be a little bit of background in the classic kind of undergraduate mathematics classes. Um, and like I mentioned, there is the kind of assessment quiz to make sure that you understand what that basic kind of preparation is. Um, any hardware requirements? No, not really. I mean, just that you have consistent access to the internet, you know, everything is going to be housed online, including your assignments, you know, you're, you'll do your assignments in, in a web browser, so you don't need to necessarily download anything to your machine. But it's, um, yeah, so you, you'll, you'll want consistent access to the internet. But other than that, um, um, it's up to you for, for what you want to do locally on your own machine. Uh, what is the difference between the diploma and a master? Um, well, a master's degree is usually, you know, around 36 hours of coursework and, um, and you know, two years or so. Um, this doesn't, 
you know, this wouldn't cover as much content necessarily as a master's diploma, but I think that if you do this, you have a very good grounding in the, uh, in the foundations of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, these are master's level courses from Columbia, you know, so I, it's not a, uh, it's not a master's, but these are master's level uh, courses. So I guess that's what I would say about that. Um, sometimes, okay, another question. Sometimes I have to go to other countries and there's problems with the network. How long we can extend the finish weekly assignments? Oh yeah, so if you know if you need an, an extension or something like that, we're here. You always have access to us through program. There's a support tab on in Canvas that you can use to talk to us, and in, um, including asking for extensions on assignments, uh, for help on assignments, or just other kind of technical. Um, questions or problems as well. So usually what we do is when the upon the assignments release, we'll release the solution uh, three weeks. So if you do need an extension, you can have one for uh, for a week or two on most assignments. I would encourage you to not do that. Um, but I understand we understand that there are certain circumstances where it's unavoidable. And um, yeah, we, we can offer some some extensions. But you know, the fewer the better, but we understand that life, uh, life happens. Okay. And uh, Joseph asks, are there practical real life use cases, industry applications of each of the concepts in the curriculum, or do we only get uh, one real life at the end? Uh, no, so yeah, so every week your assignment is going to be pretty much coding up an algorithm to work on a, 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 a data set. So like the housing prediction, um, the motion detection, these things, those are weekly assignments. So the, the thing that changes with the capstone is that you don't, you don't have question, you, you don't have like individual question prompts for everything. You know, it's basically here's the data, here's the big question. Whereas the weekly assignments kind of walk you through uh, some points of analysis with a data set and, and, and uh, also with, you know, piece by piece kind of putting together many of these algorithms. So I'd like to think that just about every week we see some sort of real life, real world application of, um, of the topic. And um, Atib Rashid uh, says, I already have a master's and have taken some machine learning classes. Will this class be helpful for me? It's a good question. I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, it depends. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with Python and the, in the libraries within Python. Uh, if you feel confident, you know, right now, getting a data set and, and doing something like a classification problem or using a neural network to analyze the data. And, you know, um, you're probably, you, you probably have everything you, you need, I, I, but I'm not sure, you know, I would say that this is a very, the thing that differentiates this course or, well, I would say there's two things that differentiate the course. One is that it's rigorous. Um, you know, especially the machine learning part of this, like where it, it's a very detailed and rigorous presentation of the machine learning algorithms. Um, so depending on kind of the, you know, the level of mathematics and things that was in the, your, that's in your background, that it will depend, you know, so, so I, I don't know, Atib, I have, um, but I would say that depending on your experience with Python or um, also with artificial intelligence, this could be uh, a useful class. And do the, Michelle asks, do projects and assignments involve submitting Python code? Yes, yes they do. That the assignments are all code based assignments. So we have an online platform called Vocarium that's an auto graded platform for your assignments. You submit the assignment there and it's auto graded, but it's, it's all code. And Elizabeth asks, what are the typical roles graduates could move into after the course? Um, I think that 
you know, again, it, it really is going to depend a little bit on your background and prior experience and that kind of thing. But any sort of data analyst, data science, machine learning engineer are options. Like those are possible moves. Um, again, some of that will depend on other things that you've done in the past, but you would certainly be ready to use Python on the job to work with data. Um, after this. So there's a, a few different ways that that could uh, manifest itself. And is the PG a uh, professional development or a postgraduate degree? It is a postgraduate certificate. Yes. All right, let's see. And and one more question, how long will it take to complete the program? Again, this is a nine month program uh, from the start of the applied machine learning course to the end of the uh, capstone. All right, great. Um, not sure if any, oh, we got another question, good. For how long have I, yeah, so I've been doing this uh, course for uh, about two years now, I think. I think we've been working on it for about two years. And Carlin as well, Carlin's been uh, working on this course with me for, for some time. Yeah, yeah, and I, I um, this course in the uh, also the applied data science as well. Yeah, I hope you had a good experience in that course. Um, Elizabeth asks, will this prepare us well for a PhD in artificial intelligence after? Um, I mean, I it, again, it would depends on how how much you want to engage with the content, but I think that this is very good preparation. If you're anticipating going into a master's program or um, a PhD program or something like that, uh, I think that this is a very nice kind of preparatory coursework for that. I think that one of the biggest kind of differentiators of this course from a lot of other offerings is, is the rigor and depth. All right, great. Well, don't hesitate to ask any other questions if you, uh, if you have them. Um, Otherwise, I hope that uh, I hope to see many of you at the beginning of December. Uh, do you have scholarships? Uh, there is financial uh, support available. You'll have to talk to admissions um, uh, for more specifics. All right, great. Yeah, like I said, um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out and contact uh, Emeritus and program support and, uh, and admissions if you have any further questions. And, um, you know, I, I look forward to seeing everybody if uh, at the start of December. It's a really great course. Um, excited to meet 